Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. Last week, I made a breakdown video of Noara's last trailer featuring the crack queen Kalinga. In this video, I will show you how we made this complex rig for Noara, and I will also break down the tentacle rigs of both the arms and the legs. This is pretty tough, so it could be hard to follow for rigging beginners. Let's dive in. All our rigs are custom rigs. It's more flexible for us to build our own rig than to use an automated solution like AutoRig Pro or Rigify. The end result is pretty close to a Rigify rig with some feature variations. Since these are game rigs, we don't use bendy modes to deform our characters, as they are a specific Blender feature that only works in Blender. Our game models are pretty detailed as we also use them for marketing and cinematic. And since we don't have to display hundreds of them on screen, the game engine can handle them easily. This allows us to add enough bones on the face of our characters to build expressions. There is no shape key involved in our characters. The most expressive part of the face, like the mouth or eyes, feature a bone for one to three bound vertices. I created a bone follow for the mouse so that the corner of the mouse will also move the controllers nearby. It also behaves pretty naturally with the jaw controller. On top of this, we use a lot of action constraints to create mouth shapes and useful face poses like eye blink, smiles or frowning. This allows quick face posing for gameplay animation that doesn't need super detailed face motion. I always build a forward kinematic and inverse kinematic switch for the arms and the legs. Learn to better animate with them in this video. And I also build a simple but versatile hand rig. Hand posing is super important to me in animation, even when the characters are seen from afar. The spine is almost the same as the one from Rigify. Finally, I often rig sockets for the weapons and gears so that we can attach them to the character's hands, back or belt for example, or decide to move them freely in space. Now that we've seen the general features of our regular rigs, let's break down the tentacle rig. If you want to create what I've shown in the beginning of the video, I teach you everything in the art of effective rigging. It's big enough friendly and the best place to start if you've never rigged before. And it thoroughly covers the full creation of such a complex rig. Check it out on p2designacademy.com. In this video, we will focus on the legs tentacle rig, as it's the most complex. The arm rig or arm tentacle is a forward kinematic chain with master bones that controls up to three forward kinematic bones at once, and a trickier controller pair bone to better shape the tentacles. For the sake of demonstration, I will just rig a three bone chain. Once you've extruded your bone, make sure that they are all unparented by pressing Alt P and clear parent. The first thing we want to create are the tweaker bone. To do so, I will select all my bone, press Shift D to duplicate them, and scale them down using individual origins. It's very important to rename your bone along the way, so I will press Ctrl F2 to open the batch rename panel. I will replace the type from object to bones, and I will search for .001 and replace it by tweakers. I'm missing one bone for the tip of the chain, so I will simply extrude it and unparent it. Each main bone will be the children of the tweaker bone. Bone A will be parented to bone A tweaker, bone B will be parented to bone B tweaker, etc. When you have overlapping bones, you can choose the one you want to select by left-clicking and holding Alt. Hold Shift to add more selection. From there, we need to apply a stretch to constraint. From the tweaker bone to the previous main bone. This has to be done in pose mode. And then you can select the bones that will constrain the other, then the ones that are gonna be constrained, and press Ctrl Shift C and choose Stretch 2. Now, whenever we move a tweaker bone, the child bone will follow, and the previous bone in the chain will also be stretched. We now need to create our forward kinematic controllers. 
To do so, I will select all the tweaker bone, switch back to edit mode, and I will duplicate them and scale them up. I can now rename them, and now I simply need to parent the tweaker bone to the corresponding FK bone. Bone A tweaker becomes the child of bone AFK, bone B tweaker becomes the child of bone B FK, and for the tip of the chain both bone C tweakers are going to be the children of bone C FK. And this is how you build a simple tweakable FK chain. The tweakers influence the main chain, and the tweakers are influenced by the FK chain. Now we do need our forward kinematic chain to be a forward kinematic chain. And to do so, we simply need to parent bone B FK to bone A FK and bone C FK to bone B FK. From there, I advise you to give a custom shape to your different controller's bone. And it's also recommended to assign them to different bones group. It's gonna be easier for you to identify the different bones and their purpose if they have different shapes and different colors. Check out my video about custom bone shapes in Blender. It's time to get into the kneading really of the video with the advanced game ready tentacle rig. If you're still holding strong to this tutorial, please post a squid or an octopus in the comments below. Again, for the sake of presentation, I've just made a six bone chain. Since the hierarchy is going to be a little more complex, I will add a root bone and call it root. Then I will recreate the tweaker bone mechanism as we did before, give them all the custom shape and assign them to a bone group. Then each main bone is going to be a child of the corresponding tweaker bone, and each tweaker bone will constrain the previous bone in the hierarchy with a stretch to constraint. Before we build our inverse kinematic chain, we are going to need a chain in between. When we previously built the forward kinematic chain, we created a controller bone per main bone. But the benefit of an inverse kinematic is to be able to control multiple bones by moving the extremity of the inverse kinematic chain. The idea here is to create a master bone for three main bones. So I duplicated bone A and B and moved them to the side by 0.5 units. I scaled them and snapped them so that they are the length of three consecutive bones. And I will now give them the suffix MCH for mechanism and B bone since they are going to be B bones. I will clear their parenting and clear their constraint in pose mode by pressing Ctrl Alt C. Let's switch our armature display to B bone and subdivide those two bones by 6 by going to the B bone section and under segment type in 6. In edit mode, I will select the other bone and you can change their thickness by pressing Ctrl Alt S. It does no influence on the rig but the way it is displayed. If I parent B bone D to B bone A and I bend it, you can see that now we have some kind of smooth bending of the bones. And what if this smooth bending was influencing the tweaker bones? But before we do so, we need to control this B bone chain. So what we will do is that we will create tweaker bones for the B bone chain. And those tweaker bones of the B bone chains are going to be manipulated or influenced by the inverse kinematic chain we are going to create right now. To simply create the chain, I will go back into edit mode, duplicate those two main bones, and offset them on the x axis for the time being. I will give them a relevant name. Remember that the bone D is parented to the bone A. Now I will parent the bone A inverse kinematic to the root bone. I will then create a new bone at the tip of the chain, clear its parenting so that it has no relation with the inverse kinematic chain, and then I will create an inverse kinematic constraint on those two bones. Don't forget to set the length of your inverse kinematic chain to the number of bones involved in the chain, in this case, two bones, and then in the bone properties, I will allow the bones to stretch by setting their inverse kinematic stretching to a value of 0.01. Remember that if you want to use IK stretching, you need to set this on all the bones of your inverse kinematic chain. My inverse kinematic base mechanism is now set up. 
So let's now create our stretching mechanism for the B bones by adding a stretch to constraint from the tweaker bone to the previous B bone in the hierarchy. We also need to parent B bone D to B bone D intermediate and B bone A to B bone A intermediate. So now those temporary tweaker bones control the chain of B bones. So if we are able to manipulate those tweakers with the inverse kinematic chain, then the inverse kinematic chain is going to influence the B bone chain. So let's parent our intermediate bone to the corresponding inverse kinematic bone. Both D tweaker are going to be the child of DMCHIK and the bone A tweaker is going to be the child of bone AIK. If we move the IK controller, then the IK chain is moving and so does the B bone chain. It's a bit wonky because it's not aligned, but it does work. There's one issue we need to address regarding the inverse kinematic chain. When we stretch it, the bones get bigger. They don't stretch properly. To isolate the scaling, we need to create intermediate bone. So I will duplicate the tweaker bone, rename them, since they were duplicated, they are also parented to the corresponding bone on the inverse kinematic chain. So whenever I'm pulling on the inverse kinematic chain, they get scaled too. A great way to prevent the scaling is to add a constraint, a copy scale, and we are going to copy the scaling of the root bone. Since the root bone is not scaled, we are not using it, those bones will stay at a scale of 1. From there, I can parent the tweaker bone to those newly created bones so that they won't get scaled, but they will follow the transformation of the inverse kinematic chain. Now you can see as I pull on the inverse kinematic controller, my B bone chain is stretching, so it's getting thinner as it gets longer. Don't give up, we're almost done. Let's switch back to B bone. You can see that with all our manipulation, we lose the benefit of the B bones that don't bend anymore. So we need to fix this. I will copy the name of the bone on the top of the chain. This way I won't have to search for its name. I will then select the B bone, go into the B bone option, and I will set the end handle to tangent and paste the name of this bone. And now you can see that my bendy bone is following the orientation of this bone. So I can do the same for the start handle using the next bone in the chain. And I will also use this bone as the end bone of the previous B bone in the hierarchy. So now whenever I move those tweaker bone, our B bone will follow. And as I rotate them, it will also bend the B bones, but I can't scale them to change the curvature of the B bone. So we need to fix this. To do so, I will switch back to octahedral. I will select our temporary tweaker bones and I will duplicate them and scale them up so that we can clearly identify them. These are going to be our current tweaker bones, so I will rename them properly. Since those bones were created by duplicating the intermediate bone, they are also following the inverse kinematic chain. But beyond this, for the time being, they don't do anything. They don't have any influence on our rig. What I want is my intermediate bone that control the B bone to follow the location and rotation of those new tweaker bones. So I will use a copy location and copy rotation constraint from the tweaker bone to the intermediate bones. So now when I move those tweaker bones, the MCHENT B bone moves and so does the B bones. But if I scale those tweaker bones, nothing happens. So we can use the scaling of those tweaker to drive the curvature of the B bones. To keep things clear, I will move all the MCH bone onto another layer. I will first hide the main B bones and then select the MCH intermediate bone, press M and move them onto the layer number two. So if I move my tweaker on the side, we can see the B bone spending. And now in the bone property, if I change the ease in and out, I can change the curvature of the B bone. To easily identify my tweaker bone, I will assign them to a bone group and set them to a red color. I will also give them a custom shape, a double-sided arrow. 
Since I will be only using the Y scaling of my tweaker bone, I can lock the other channels. To use the Y scale as the driver, I will right click on the Y scale channel and choose copy as new driver. Then I can select the first P bone and I want to drive the ease in value. So I will right click on it and I will choose paste driver. As I do so, you will see a slight shift in the bending of the B bones. And this is because it's currently using the scaling of the bone, which is one and not zero. So I need to change the driver. I will right click and choose edit driver, switch to script expression, and I want the current scale minus one. So that by default, it's going to be a value of zero. When I scale it up, it will increase the easing. And if I scale it down, it will reduce it to zero. Now I just need to repeat the process with the different tweaker bone. The tweaker bone in the middle will influence the end of the B bone A and the beginning of the B bone D, while A tweaker will influence the beginning of B bone A and D tweaker tip the tip of B bone D. This is the final step, don't give up. So now we need to influence our tweaker bones in the very first chain the chain that is supposed to deform our character. We need to create an intermediary chain of bones so that we can parent our tweaker bone to it. This intermediary chain will be influenced by the B bone, and since our tweaker bone will be children, they will behave the same way, but we will be able to manipulate them. To do so, I've selected all my tweaker bone, duplicated them, and scaled them down and I just renamed them with the suffix mch. And now I'm parenting the tweaker bone to this newly created mch bone. Once done, I will get rid of the custom shapes on those mch bones. I will zoom on my armature so that you can clearly see those tweaker mch. What's very important is to make sure that they are parented to nothing. They have no parent because we are going to use the armature constraint. Since the armature constraint is a relationship constraint, having a hierarchy on top of it will most certainly generate bugs, a bit like the child of constraint. I added an armature constraint to the tweaker MCH. Now I need to click add target bone to be able to assign it to a specific bone. And I will use my B bone D. Using an, armature const using an armature constraint is like skinning the constraint bone to the target bone. So I will give the same constraint to the tweaker DEF. Then I will constraint bone A, B, C, M, C, H to the B bone A. And finally, for the D tweaker M, C, H, I will add an armature constraint with an influence from both the B bone D and B bone A, since it's right in the middle of those two bones. The result is a bit funky because our chains are not aligned, but you can see the curvature of the B bones on our main chain. Finally, to prevent any scaling issue, I will add a copy scale constraint on each MCH tweaker bone from the root bone. Now the final step is to realign all the bones so all the chain that I have offset to have a better view of what I'm doing, I will just select them in edit mode, press G, X and minus 0.5 to offset them on top of the original chain. I will also give a custom shape to my root bone and to my inverse kinematic controller so that you have a better look at what we have done. This is definitely a tough rig, but it's very versatile. And honestly, this is what you need whenever you want to reach this level of quality in your animations. Rigging is not about creating tons of functionalities, it's about giving control to the animator. And animating is not about motion, it's about life, it's about getting strong poses, and it's about crafting every of them. This is the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you very very soon.